Hey guys, Mike Glover here. If you haven't realized already, by now, um, Project Veritas came out with some damning information through an FBI leak of American Contingency, a group that I started years ago, to encourage communities to take care of each other. That was the whole objective. Apparently, according to this FBI leak, the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which I've worked with a lot throughout my military and contracting career, has designated me and my group, American Contingency, a terrorist organization? Yeah, that's right. They call it MVEs because they love acronyms. Militia Violent Extremist. Apparently American Contingency are a militia. A nationwide militia typically does things online, but also has a low history of violence. I don't even know what that means. I mean, what is low when it's zero? Like you're saying it's low, but I'm telling you it's none. So shouldn't it be zero? Like no history of violence? But you're saying low history of violence, like there's some violence that we incited or were part of, but I don't have that evidence and I run it. It's my organization, AmericanContingency.com. You can go there, it's like a website and stuff. So the interesting thing about this document leaked by Project Veritas, which has been known to do these type of things, they expose truths of corruption, especially political corruption. The FBI is certainly a political action arm for whoever's in charge. It's been used that way since the origin of time. I've seen it happen personally when I was involved with targeting Abu Qatala, the guy responsible for going into Benghazi and killing four Americans, including an ambassador, including two gold response staff officers. It bums me out that my own government that I worked for, intimately worked for, would target me and the community that we built together as domestic terrorists. On that same document, they talk about Ruby Ridge, talk about Waco. They talk about radical extremists in America, and we're lumped into that. Well, that's problematic for everything, right? I mean, why, do, why would you have a problem with that? Well, I don't know, because I understand how this works. Designation means authorization. What does that mean? Well, that means when the government designates you something, there's a task and purpose behind that. Typically, that starts with funding, task organization and allocation of those funds to target you, to target me, which is very interesting because I've cooperated with the FBI when it came to militant human beings that were part of my organization that wanted to be part of a terrorist organization, but it wasn't us because we're not terrorists. To give you some highlights real quick, I started American Contingency because of the absence of first response in America when BLM and Antifa were burning down our communities. Yeah, those are real terrorists. Those are real domestic terrorist organizations. I said it, and I'll say it again. Black Lives Matter and Antifa should be domestic terrorist organizations. Well, why would you say that, Mike? Well, I fought terrorism and extremism my entire adult life. And I know what extremists and terrorists are. Not just figuratively, but literally. So figuratively, their Marxist ideology is lead leading them to literally burn down our city, cities and towns. We saw it happen with our own eyes, but we wanted to pump our fist and be proud of the BLM movement. We saw record number of donators from athletes, actors, popular people that were pulling in millions of dollars to support this radical extreme ideology. And we were okay with that as a society. But if you go to C-SPAN or CNN, we're still talking about January 6th. Where was American contingency on January 6th? I know where I was. I was at home, taking care of my family, defending what I love most. On January 6th, I put out guidance to American contingency members who asked me, Mike, what should we be doing? Well, what you should be doing is taking care of your families and your community. What you shouldn't be doing is thinking that you're gonna protest, turn violent, and go inside the Capitol building. I had American contingency members on January 6th at the Capitol building, but not at the Capitol building or in the Capitol building, 
but standing off and reporting information for force protection to give people in neighborhoods or in the surrounding area guidance and information on how they could best protect themselves. Because if that mob started to move into a neighborhood, we needed to know. You know why? Because nobody else was communicating that. Nobody did it in Seattle when they were going into neighborhoods and started the Chaz movement. Remember that? How did that socialist, communist experiment work out for them? Where they had access points, checking IDs, like they were a socialist party movement. Because they are, that's what they are. The radical extremist. What were we doing? Uplifting our communities. In fact, uh, last week, while 37 innocent Americans lost their lives in a crisis, natural disaster, a flood in Kentucky, where were we? Supporting that community with groups, volunteers, and we raised over $20,000. I would love to tell you all about that. I would love to give you the good news, but I can't. Because on the platforms like Facebook and Instagram, if I use the word American contingency, I will be banned. My mom called me yesterday and said, does the government think I'm a terrorist because I'm a member of American contingency? And I didn't know how to respond. She was pissed off just like I was pissed off because she knows the task, the purpose, the mission of American contingency, which I will remind you to provide resources and community to allow people to communicate, to help each other in a man-made or natural disaster. We have this outsourcing um, collaborative understanding that's now a dilemma in our society where we've agreed that if we take our taxpayers' dollars via the person we voted in, there will be this outsourcing of all the things that we hold nearest and dearest to our hearts, like our children's education, like the security of our children, like the security of ourselves, first responders, hospitals, healthcare, the list goes on. Even logistical supplies we've outsourced because we wanna work collectively or collaboratively together, except now we know the truth. The truth is the government and all of its corruption is making mistakes. And before, when the media didn't report on these things, it was masked. It was minimized, even suppressed. But all of a sudden, all this stuff starts coming to the surface and we're exposing truths. Look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe in conspiracies for the most part, but this isn't a conspiracy. This is truth. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has targeted me, my family, and my organization, American Contingency, calling us a extremist organization, militia, or a domestic terrorist group. How does that affect me? Well, I don't know. I have a major book that I'm writing for a major publisher. I'm doing sh shows with um, history, discovery, you name the network. I'm talking to guys who are talking about me um, being the host of all these cool shows for all this cool content that's the livelihood of me, my family, and my community. Except now that might be taken away because why would anybody want to do business with a terrorist? I talked to many of my friends in, in the arena of taking up for themselves, talking about self-reliance. And what we have is a complete and utter train wreck. What the FBI should know is I'm going to get a lawyer. In fact, I have a call with a lawyer today. And I'm going to do everything in my power legally to put forward a civil lawsuit against the Federal Bureau of Investigation, not only for, def uh, not only for defamation, but violating the Privacy Act. And well, Mike, well, isn't that a case that you might not win? I don't care because I'll talk about it. I'll get on every news network. You guys need to share and express yourselves as much as possible because they're used to being bullies. They're used to their tactics working, which is if we just talk about it, if we just uh, suppress the people, they'll shut up. But Mike Glover won't shut up. Anybody who's worked with me who see me flip tables on uh, lieutenant colonels in Libya when we wouldn't rescue hostages, 
who see me take up for the little man when no cameras were around, when it wasn't a popular thing, know me. And I will never stop, especially fighting for a purpose that I feel very intimately and intently capable of leading, which is giving people the understanding that my experience in combat, my experience in special operations, my experience as an entrepreneur is conducive to benefiting your life and giving you the tactics, techniques, and procedures you need to be best prepared for the future. We're living in turbulent times. I can't sit in a log cabin on the side of a ridge line in remote wilderness, off grid, living my best life knowing that I have information in my head, the ability to resource information and disseminate it to you that might benefit you because things are going bad. Things are not going to get any better in this country unless we have people who are willing to fight for it. I spent 20 years of my life fighting for it and I'm still fighting for it. I am not a domestic terrorist. I'm not a militia, violent extremist. I am a man who served this country and who is now an entrepreneur with my merry band of brothers, the Andy Stumps, the Tim Kennedys, the Evan Hafers, that are doing the same exact thing in a different way, trying to give back, trying to build back, trying to make a better country for everyone. I don't want war. I don't want civil war. I want freedom. And I want to be left the hell alone by the government. The government, unfortunately, in this circumstance, has picked on the wrong person. Not because I'm a badass, because I have better tactics than you. I know you because I worked for you for 20 years. That's not a threat, that's a promise. I will do everything in my power, every minute of the day, to make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else. Because it's wrong, and you know it's wrong. The government, by the way, isn't some dark web entity that exists in a, in a dark corner of the world. It is you, it is me. It's made up of the people. We need to do a better job at electing the right people, which we're not doing a very good job right now of doing. So collectively, what I want is less government interference, and this certainly is a lot of government interference. When I can't make a living lawfully improving people's lives, trying to have communities band together to protect themselves when the government won't, and then labeled a terrorist for it, man, you're waging war with the wrong person. And this isn't a war of, of in the streets, bounding, shooting, moving, and communicating. This is a different war. This is a different radical war of ideology. And we will win. The American people will win. Thank you for tuning in to all the things that I put out. Thank you for being members, if you're not a member, of thinking about being members of American Contingency, because it's profound. The government hates when people come together and do something outside of their control. And if you haven't realized it yet, the government just wants more control. And I'm not anti-government, because there's a place. But the place that exists now is too much. Too much control, too much oversight, too much government. It's gotten too fat and too bloated, and I'm here to trim the fat. It's what we need to do together, and we will accomplish this. The start point is banding together in groups and tribes in your own backyard, taking care of each other. Because when the man-made or natural catastrophe happens, you don't have time to wait for anybody else. You need to depend on yourself, your own skill sets, your family and friends, and most certainly your community. Let's get back to those values. Guys, I hate it because I hate talking about this stuff because it disgusts me, the fact that this would happen, but I'm not disheartened by this entire event. It's what moves me, it's what drives me. If we meet resistance and doing the right thing, and that's part of it, then that's just part of it. We'll continue to move forward together.